Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Friday Eve day for the first of a three-part series on radical reporting functions. What a great group we have signed up. We have continuing education providers from coast to coast with us. Chuck, about half of the group have never used functions before, and those who have used functions are ready for a refresher and to see what new things might be available. Before you get started, I want to remind everyone to post your questions and comments in the chat box. Matthew's with me today to help monitor your questions, and we can get those to check where appropriate. This is being recorded, and we will send you the recording tomorrow so you can return for review or to share with others. It will be saved to our webinar archives as well. And Chuck, I know you have a lot of great content to cover, so I'm going to turn things over to you. And we have audio. Okay, Sharon, thank you. And again, happy day after St. Patty's Day, everybody. And uh, Cheryl, when she put this together, was was thinking ahead, and you note the lovely green background. So uh, I, I hope that you all uh, had a had a great one. Uh, safely distanced and all that good stuff. So we're here to talk about functions and, and functions have been around forever in the ACEWARE reporting mode. And basically, uh, as far as an overview, it is it allows us to help you extend the options that you have available when you're doing reports. And so that's that's what we're about today and we're gonna try to dive into it a bit deeper. Uh, here are the kind of things we're going to cover. Uh, we're excited about the new function help, which if you read the newsletter, noted that Cheryl has worked hard at a new design on it that for those of you that have been using functions, I think it'll be a, a better roadmap. And uh, we're actually going to get into starting to walk through, okay, uh, pretty much run at a brisk pace through the functions. Um, uh, I get dinged a lot on my evaluations about going too fast. Um, again, remember the help guide is out there and we're going to hit that. Uh, so it'll always be available for you at whatever pace you want uh, to read about and learn more about functions. So Sharon mentioned that we've got about a 50% group as far as actually having used functions. I would like to give you a raise your hand. I didn't look through, take the time to look through the sign up. Raise your hand if you have modified a report and or looked at a function. So I don't have to necessarily use the report or actually have you modified, but you have opened a report and done some function editing or at least looked around at them. So we've got some on that. Good. Yep, yep, yep. We've got a good group on that. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I'm going to put the hands down. All right. Uh, let's jump into the basics. So what is a function? And again, as we kind of noted, it allows you to extend information or extend the functionality of your reports. Um, uh, a report cursor, we're going to use that term a lot. A report cursor is basically when you run a report out of the student manager reports menu, it, it actually picks and chooses data from the 47 different tables that ACEWARE uses to give you a central kind of an Excel looking file of data. That is called a cursor. And so that's our terminology. Uh, that we're following through here. Um, and again, we're coming, we're bouncing around this whole idea of, of modifying reports. We have tons of information both in the webinar archive and on the online help guide about the general report modification area. So again, we're assuming that's where you're going to be putting functions uh, and I wanted to make sure to reference there is help available to you for that. So again, the, the taxonomy of a function, it's a name followed by a set of parentheses. Uh, so again, so here is a report expression and the parentheses. Um, so again, what 
the nice state function allows you to do is to display dates in some format other than month, month, day, day, Y, Y, Y. So again, uh, the nice state function uh, using begin date, which has got an extra D in it, would return uh, a nicely formatted date. Uh, most functions have at least one required parameter and most have optional parameters. And basically what a parameter is, is a set of data that you pass to that function to give it instructions on what exactly you want it to do. Uh, if you've got multiple parameters, uh, you separate the parameters with commas. Some parameters are uh, keywords like a field name. Some parameters are numbers. Some parameters are logical, true, false, uh, period T, period, period F, period. And then some parameters are text where you put uh, a phrase inside quotes. Um, so again, um, that uh, it gives, these are examples of how nice state operates. Parameters are the data fields, the co-begin date and co-end date. Some functions have formatting options. For instance, nice date has the third parameter that abbreviates the dates. And so you see the parameter one is the begin date, parameter two is the end date, parameter three is a uh, key code or a, a numeric value that abbreviates the dates. So that if you add the number three to nice date, it will actually return an abbreviated month and day. So the question, so how do I know what that three does? Well, you would use the help guide. And I thought I had a link to that. So let me roll to, let me roll to a browser here. Some help. And this is your magic carpet, guys. It takes you to any place you want to go about functions. And I would start by going into reporting. Now, we could use a search, uh, but I'm going to suggest we go into reporting, report functions. And we're looking at nice date, which is a formatting. And if you're haven't looked at functions in a while. We used to give a complete list alphabetically and you'd have to scroll through and find it. Now you've got the ability to search by groups. So nice date is a formatting function. And there it is, nice date. So this is your, this is your, oh, hang on. There we go. This is your detail for nice date. And again, uh, in giving you the data, so a required parameters is a date field. Uh, the second one is a second date field, which would be begin ending date. And then here is that numeric return value. Uh, you can enter a zero. If you're going to use padding, or you can type a three there and that would abbreviate the dates. So again, that is how you can get back to, you can get back to the particular uh, instructions on how exactly you do um, send the information to the function. So what can they do for you? Number one, and this is the probably the most uh, common I shouldn't say that, because it, it depends on what you need. Display data that's not in the cursor. You can format the data, like the nice date one we just showed you. Uh, you can perform calculations on data. You can return subtotals, or you can return uh, like the total due or the total paid on a, on a registration. Stamp data into a field. Now, these are powerful, powerful functions that allow you to, in essence, do find and replace. 
And again, caveat, uh, that is one that you have to be careful of because we'll mention that most, uh, we, we generally suggest you feel free to add functions however you want and you're not gonna break anything. S note, if you're using stamp data, you do need to know what you're doing. Uh, make sure you have somebody who, you know, can coach you through that if you've never done that before, because that does physically change data in your files. Export data into an external file. Uh, list data from other tables. And that is a powerful tool. Uh, like if you wanted to bring in payment data to a, a deadbeat report, the deadbeat report in and of itself doesn't include details about payments. By using a function, you can actually add that payment detail into the into that particular report. Uh, special use functions, and again, uh, these are functions that allow you to do things like adding, when you're doing mass emails, you can actually add through a just do it or a just after the email function and be able to generate a list of names to which you wanna send a mass email to. All right, where do you go for help for functions? And again, we gave you a quick preview of that uh, to go to the uh, online help guide. And again, you can see functions in alphabetical order or by category. Uh, the old layout was by default in alphabetical order. We have now flipped that so that your default sort is by category. And then if you wanted to view it in alphabetical order, uh, you can flip that. So um, when you are using functions, one of the things you need to know most of the time is what is the actual data field that holds the information you want. Well, uh, if you're not 100% sure of all of the data fields, what you can do is go to the online help to the screen layout. And again, I think this is helpful enough that we're going to go back to that. From your main student manager help screen, and again, if you to access the help guide, you can either go in through your student manager screen and either hit the help guide from the main launch menu or from the book at the top, or go into your browser and go to your student manager, the Aceware website, go to customers, and you've got your online reference guide. So um, when you're, and I was at the online reference guide, so let's go back to the online reference guide. Here we go. Uh, online reference guide and where we were talking about was how do you know the field name of a particular code field you might want to use in a function? Well, go to screen layout, go to say name screen, you say I want to know that ID code field that uh, Chuck keeps talking about. Well, the ID code is this code up in the corner, if you open the screen guide, hover over the field itself, you will see a pop out, NMID, and that is the actual field name that we need to use in our function. So again, clicking on the field gets you the detail. You can also go to data structure and get a detailed list of the data fields. So again, name ID and course code or the course ID are the two probably most commonly used fun, uh, fields that you need to pass to a function in order to look up data or to bring data back or to perform an operation on a particular set of records. Um, the thing to note is that you can get the ID number of the name in several different fields. Uh, because it is used as a common field in a, many of the areas. And I'm trying to find my mouse. There's my mouse. 
Uh, so again, and the names, it's called NMID. In register, it's RGID, pay PYID. Basically, what you're going to see is the first two letters of your field is the file that it comes from. And the last two letters of ID is pretty much the indication that that is the name ID. On the course code, it is CRSE is typically the abbreviation for the course code and the first two letters are the table that it comes from. CO is from the course table, RG from the register. Um, again, anyone, if you need the name ID, you can use it from any one of those tables that the ID exists in. So again, it doesn't care where you get the data from as long as you use that particular ID. Uh, you can see what fields are available in the cursor, and this is in the modify mode uh, when you're doing modifications. The data environment button on the top of your modify screen allows you to see the existing fields in the cursor. So you click on it, you, you'll get the listing of the fields, and you can scroll down through it to see if the field you want is there. If not, you could use one of these functions to bring it into your report. Um, you can scroll down the list to see the fields. And again, in the search mode in the help guide, you can search for fields. <clears throat> so, uh, up here in the search area uh, would typically suggest that you go to the all topics. I'm in the help guide now. You go into all topics, reporting functions, and now if I were to search for add name, it would search and give me here is the function add name and it would give me the information that I need in order to add a function that brings back data to the cursor that I might not have that I, that I want. So again, and you don't have to, you don't have to necessarily, well, like when you're searching in report functions, if you're not sure of the name of the function, but you just wanna know what it does, like formatting a date or uh, uh, fees, uh, registration fees, um, if you type in some keywords, it should bring up any function that performs uh, work in that area and you can kind of browse through to find the right one. Um, and in the search uh, on the online help, there is a little question mark that gives you some tips on how to do searching. How are we doing? Sharon, Matthew, any questions, any so, questions far? so far? There was a question about being able to print these um, field names. Can you go back to the help guide? Yep. yep. Okay, print the field names. I believe that Please. if you go to uh, reporting, uh, reporting, screen layout with field names, that you can go into... There's a list format there and a PDF. Yeah, yeah. screen layout. If you go to screen layout and you get to the front screen, if you scroll down a little, it says view the names in a list format. And then you can go in and I believe from this area, you can print or at least copy this and, and dump it to a printer. I'm trying to think in my help guide. I might, Matthew, you may want to, buzz Cheryl on that and see if there's a quicker way to print uh, these particular codes. So, but it's certainly there available for you in the, uh, um, in the help guide. All right, any others? Carry on. All righty, um, the, the search guide. And again, within the help, I suppose we could search, uh, search the help guide for printing and that would give you some ideas as well. Again, once you find the function you want to use, uh, the function detail shows you how to use it and also gives you an example. And it will show you, you can actually copy the data from the example, you know, between the beginning and the end parens, paste it into your report uh, expression. So you don't even have to worry about retyping, you can actually copy paste 
to, to put an example of a function in for you to, to get a good start with. Um, and then when you're on a function, if you look at the bottom, and we're going to go back, if you look at the bottom, which is related topics, it will give you a list of alternate functions or uh, other functions that do similar kinds of things that the function you're on. So you could say, well, maybe this doesn't do things quite the way I want, or is there another function that might do a better job? You can go in and, and it's kind of like a C also, uh, or synonyms for, uh, for this particular function. Uh, the function roadmap, and again, going back to the way the help is laid out now, where you can uh, look at them by category now, which I think is, uh, you'll see, fun and functions will be cross-listed. Again, just like you can cross-list courses uh, on your ACE web display, uh, one function might have also uh, formatting as well as an add field uh, uh, you know, functionality or deliver stuff to you. You can also do it in alphabetical order. Function fright, and I kind of alluded to this earlier. Can I screw things up with functions? Generally, no, except, as we mentioned, the stamping functions, uh, where you're going to be doing replacing data or putting in new data into fields in your database. Uh, you probably should kind of make sure you've got your T's crossed and your I's dotted. Uh, that you're that you're getting the right the right data generated generated in. First up, add functions. Again, why do we need add functions? And again, it's kind of like, you know, what's what's the point in building reports? And remember, we talked about cursor at the beginning, which is the data set that student manager report gives you when you run a particular report most all in most all cases we don't give you in the report every single field from a data file the names uh, data file has what matthew 107 different fields in the names data file some of those fields are really internal some of those fields are a little bit um, they're very seldom used so we don't put in those uh, fields as part of the main set so if you need but you if you find you have a report area that you like and you say but i wish i had one more name field that's not seen in the drop down uh the add function allows you to get that and do we have to modify a report to use the functions and the answer is yes. If it's not in the report, you would have to use the modify function, modify report tool, and then use the expression box on the report to generate uh, to generate the file or to to put in the function. So let's kind of roll into add functions, and I think uh, schedule wise we're going to be a bit ahead, and so. Uh, would be happy to review some examples. Uh, we're going we're to show you some examples in a bit. Uh, but again, add field functions allow you to, uh, we sometimes call them gopher functions. You want to say, go get, go for some data. I want you to go get me some data from the name table that I don't have in this particular report. And what generally you're going to do is the add function requires you to pass an ID number to it that tells you what record you want to actually get the data from. So that basically in the report, you're setting on Chuck Havlicek's name and the ID number is available on that row. Uh, so what you're doing is you're telling it, I'm going to give you Chuck Havlicek's ID, NMID. And I want you to bring back from the names table, even though it's not in the report cursor, I want you to bring back the fee category value and display it in this report. Um, and again, this is an example where in the, there are two parameters. First parameter is, this keeps going away. The first parameter is name ID, uh, which is the, the ID code. 
and then NMFECAT, which is a field name, and we're going to put that in quotes. Now, just a, a note, I don't have this on my slide, but when you're putting in a field name to display and you're putting it in quotes uh, to, to as a name, you don't need to worry about punctuate or about capitalization. Punctuation, and there's no punctuation on a single field name, but it can be uppercase, lowercase, you just need to spell it correctly. Um, and again, in this case, uh, there should be examples of this on the function help guide that you can copy paste and just edit the name of the field within those quote fields. And we'll, we'll show you that when we get to an example. Uh, so what are some of the basic add field functions? And uh, what we're gonna do is kind of run through uh, the functions in the add field area. Then I'm gonna go back in and we're gonna open up a report and, and walk through uh, the kind of functions we can be adding in this add field area. Um, so again, first up, add course, return a field from the course table. I had some tools here, drawing tools menu. Let me get a pointer here. There's pointer, okay. Uh, you would pull a field from the course table, pull a field from user defined, count the course unlimited user defined field table. If you're using one of the things, if you're using the new unlimited user defined data fields, you will be getting into um, using the add functions because you'll need to use the unlimited user defined fields functions to bring those into your table. Uh, add name, return field from them, add name UDS, add name unlimited fields. Uh, registrations, add reg fields, unlimited user defined fields, other tables, add a payment uh, or add fields from the pay table, uh, return fees. Uh, so if you're on a course, uh, you're running a course report and you wanna be able to show on that report of courses, what are the fees that we've got set up on this course? Um, and there, there's, a, there's a couple report areas that do have fees with them, but maybe you're in a course area and you just wanna bring in the fee descriptions for that course because you like the way that's laid out. This allows you to do that. Uh, add a firm, bring a field from the firm table, bring the course location in, put in the teacher name. And again, this is one a lot. There really aren't a lot of reports that actually link the teacher as a native field. So you would need to use one of the teacher field. Um, you'd want to you'd want to use some of the add teach um, or the teacher locator fields to put that data into your report. Uh, workshop records. Uh, Okay, add field functions. Um, some of the basic functions have additional parameters that allow you to get the data you want. And we talked about supplemental data. You have required parameters, and then you have optional parameters. Uh, so again, a lot of the optional parameters have to do with formatting. How exactly you might want, how, how exactly you might want that data to display on your report. Uh, parameter one is the unique value of the course, which is a course ID, the field you want to return. Parameter three, do you want to return additional fields or optional fields? And then parameter four is the fee order. So again, in the help guide that generally gives you, I think, a pretty good idea of how to get into that. Well, before we get into questions, let's go ahead and roll back. I want to go backwards and we'll get into where we're going to start um, showing you an example of, of how you did this. So I'm going to go over to student manager here. And uh, I made a favorite report with my report examples. And again, if you're not using favorite reports, uh, and if you run the same report more than once or twice a week, you'd save a ton of time by get, dropping it into favorite reports. 
Uh, and there's a help guide that you can go to the help guide to learn if you haven't done that. So I've got this set up. I'm going to run this favorite report. I'm going to modify it. This happens to be a deadbeat report for a range of dates. So here we are at the course modify screen. And I'm going to wake you up again. How many of you, this is the first time you've seen this screen? Literally the first time you've seen it. And no, no shame of, no harm, no foul. Tell me this is the first time you've actually looked into this. Okay. What this is, is the tool that allows you to edit, change formats, add fields to a report. And as mentioned, in the help guide, there is a pretty detailed section in help and in the webinar archive. We're going to jump into webinar archive as far as a resource. Under the webinar archive, under reporting, we've got a section here on report modification, basics, aesthetics, intermediate, extreme. So again, you've got some webinars, help guide that will help you get up to speed on that. Okay, back to the actual report itself. The tools at the top of the screen are tools you can use when you are uh, modifying reports. In order to put a function in a report, you would use the field function or what we sell, call it also, the expression box function. And the way it works is that you click on the box, you put it on the form in the location you want, drag and drop a piece of real estate, and now we're at the point where we can type in our function name that we want to add. Now, right now, we're in the area where we're putting name information in, and here we see we actually have the name ID displayed for us so we know what it is. If we wanted to say add, and let's, I'm gonna back up now and we'll talk about, we'll talk about the fields. We mentioned earlier that data environment is the button on your report tool that you can see what data fields are available to us. Well, I'm in the base, deadbeat report and it has a lot of fields in it. It has uh, a bunch of fields from the course. I'm trying to think not all but most. Most every field from the location, no and not all, most of the location. A bunch of fields from the name and in fact I'm thinking it might have every single stinking field from the name so we're going to cheat and say that there's a field there that we don't have so that we can use an example. Name user, the okay, but anyway, those are the fields that we've got native. <clears throat> so if we were in a report, uh, some other report area, we say, well, I need to know the source code of this name. That is, what's the tracking code for this name? Did I get, did they find out from the mailing list or from uh, something else? And let me pick a different example because we're not sure. Let's, for giggles and grins, let's say the zip code was not on the name record. Okay. You say, well, I want to know the zip code for this particular name. So what I would need to do, I'm going to go to my help guide. I'm going to go to the help and I want to do functions and I'm going to search for add name or I'm going to search for zip. And there it is, add zip, return zip code. Uh, actually, that is because we really want the zip code for the name record. So it's, we're searching for name and we get lots of data under name and we should find add name in here. Why wouldn't add name show up when I'm searching for name? Well, I'm going to cheat and just go to the functions themselves. Add name. There it is. I wonder why I wouldn't find that in the name. I have to ask Cheryl about that. Here is my add name function because what I want to do is I want to add data 
from the name table to my report. And so if I go down to examples, and by the way, when you're, when you're searching and it highlights the keyword you've searched for, if you want to get rid of the highlighting so that it's a little easier to read, you just un unclick the highlight button there. Down here in examples is where it says, here's an example of how you use add name to get day phone. Well, I don't want day phone, but I'm going to copy this function. Right mouse click, copy this, go back to my report. I have to put my box back in because it went away because I left it hanging. And now I can paste in that control V or right mouse click paste, and I can paste in that expression. And now I click inside the quotes and I change, change the ID from NM day phone to the zip code field. Well, what if I don't know the zip code field that I want to return? We go back to help. And we go back to screen layout, go to the name screen, hover over the zip code, and it tells us it's NMZip. Cool. So now I know this how to spell it, Z-I-P. And I have now added the zip code to this record so that I can see it. Uh, so now when we're modifying a report, one of the options as you're building this report is to preview it, file preview. And we can see, okay, there is the zip code for Jason, for Bobby, for Carol. So it added that to the, to the view. That is the basics of adding a function to a report. Go to modify, go to your AB field uh, tool, uh, drag and drop a, a little window to drop the field into, and then type in your function name in that box. Cheryl, uh, Sharon, what do we got for questions here? We have a question about why the colors here. What do those mean? <laughs> Um, that is for, uh, for my, to basically highlight the functions. I built those on the report so that I could show, so that you could see that these are functions that I have added. Now there are some other, now I haven't automatically changed them. When you're in modify, when you're modifying a report, you're in the modify tool set, um, Right now, there is nothing selected. And so you see there are some dim items here. If I select an item, I've now selected the name object. The font properties tool allows me to change the colors. Uh, and again, I did the color change just to highlight and illustrate that that is a function uh, so that you can see it uh, relative to the data elements that are on the screen. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, it's basically for clear, just to kind of help identify that for uh, readability. Again, when you're building a report, if you have a color printer and you want to be able to emphasize an element on a report with color, knock yourself out. Uh, so you can, you can go ahead and do that. I want to go ahead and highlight that. So now we've, we've added that color as well. Any other questions right now, Sharon? Nope, carry on. All right. Um, so uh, that was the add name. This was, a, this was a function I had added earlier. And by the way, um, when you're in this report expression or the field um, tool, uh, you can type it into the box right here. And if it's a long expression, some of these functions might have several parameters and so it stretches out. The little ellipsis button on the right gives you a full, um, more, uh, gives you more room to type. And again, one of the challenges of the Aceware report writer, and we haven't figured out how to do it, is that the print inside here seems to be tiny. So you may, I'm not sure how good you can read that through your browser or through your uh, 
go to meeting but that that the print is kind of tiny and so you kind of sometimes have to look but this gives you the ability to see basically more characters while you're uh, while you're working with a report or while you're working with a function okay uh here is an example of a function uh add course date what is that add let's double click bring it up add cr dat so what is that function well let's look it up we're gonna go up and look up add cr dat and i'm gonna search all topics because i have the exact function name i'm searching for and it says it returns the beginning ending date of a course in different formats well that might be handy so what do i need to know in order to have the function work well in this case what is required is the course id all right cool i can do that so i'm here in our report and it says there are parameters zero one two three. Oh, what, what what do those mean well let's go back and look at our help guide so optional parameters if you have a zero or which is the default it'll return it month month day year year uh with month month day year year if it is a two-day course with multiple days item number one expands the year gives you all four digits item number two gives you a nice date format and item number five or parameter number five gives you nice date format with the trim of the month and no year so well what is related to that i go down to related topics and i see date list functions description mees dates and then nice date which we talked about in the earlier uh in the earlier element now the difference here on between nice date and add CR date is subtle, but note in this case for nice date, I actually have to have the date field of the course available in order to print out this nice date. However, add CR date, add CR date, all I need is the course number and what is unique about that is that a lot of times course number well let's say this course number is a field that you're going to find in a lot of reports any course any report that has to do with courses registrations or payments or workshops will have the course number in it so what that means by knowing the course number, I can get the beginning and ending date of a course, bring it into the report without actually needing to have and format it even without having the date fields in the basic report itself. <clears throat> so again, uh, let's take a look at this report. What does that look like? So we know what a beginning ending date is. Let's take a preview preview and so here is the default uh value beginning date ending date here is the default value with the parameter that extends the year to the full four digits this is a parameter that gives you the dates in a nice nice date format and this is a parameter that gives you the dates in a kind of an abbreviated nice date format so again um, examples of how uh, a function can be used to add uh, data to a report now this is one let's say that this is a deadbeat report so it shows the name of the student some information about the student it shows information about the class and if we wanted to show different formats of how that uh, class dates would set but maybe what we want to do is also show payment data details about the payments well let's go to our data environment and see is there any native payment data in this course or in this cursor and this is deadbeat 
And I know the answer. It does not have any native payment data. It does have data about the registration fee on the registration. And it has data about the total due and the total paid, but it doesn't have any payment detail. For people who have done editing, you know the pay table begins with PY and then a data field. Not a single PY data field in here. So what we want to do is go to the help guide and say, we want to add fees. Let's see if we can get this to work. Reporting function, and we're going to say fees. <clears throat> and here we have uh, fee distribution, show optional fees, base fees, get fees, add fee. There it is, add fee. So again, what does it do? It returns the registration fees. Oh, no, this is add fee. We want payments, sorry. This would show, now this is an example. If we wanted to actually show the individual fees that a course had, we would use this, but we're, we're dealing with payments is what we said. So we wanna do P-A-Y-M-E-N-T-S, payment, let's see if, uh, add pay, there it is, add pay, return payment information for a particular registration. So what do we need to know? We need to know a course number, okay, Deadbeat has that. We need to know a name ID, yep, Deadbeat has that. And then it says, what is it that we want to display? Fields from the pay table to display. Uh, uh, do we want to add a condition, which means, now this is something we hadn't talked about before. A lot of your functions, especially some of those that like bring data back from a different table, like we're in the register area and we want to bring some payments over, it'll offer us the ability to say, choose which records to bring over from the payment table. So if for some reason we said, I only wanna bring over payments where there was a payment, I don't want refunds, I don't want, um, um, yeah, I don't want refunds in there. I don't want any negative payment. Uh, so I can say as a condition, the payment amount has to be greater than zero. Uh, and then sometimes where you have multiple rows of data that you're going to bring over. How do you want to separate the data with a carriage return or commas or dashes? Uh, again, it's a formatting issue. Now, I've already added this function to the report, but again, if you say, if I want to add uh, only the credit card payments and bring the credit card last four digits over, I could just copy this function and then go over and paste it into my uh, uh, field box or expression box. All right, so that's that's the function we wanna use. And there it is. So here is the function add pay. I've passed the course number and I've passed the ID. I did not pass any parameters. And when you do that, you get the default. Well, let's take a look at what that is. And uh, Rachel, you know, or whoever asked that question about color, I color coded this green, not for St. Patrick's Day, but because it's money, 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 money. So here we have, there was no payment on this one, apparently, Jason's a, a deadbeat. So here we have Bobby Anderson on his word processing class. The payment was $350. That's the receipt. And it was paid by MasterCard. Uh, here's Carol Anderson. And for her ACE Club membership, she paid it on 6-4. It was receipt number of this. It was MasterCard. It was 10 bucks. So again, that data was not in the deadbeat report cursor, but by using a function, we were able to bring that data over. Okay, we got a couple of minutes here. Uh, we'll let you out early if you want. If you got questions or you want to see a couple other examples kind of related to this, um, shoot them out. Sharon, anything going? There was some question about being able to preview this, and, and I think you've answered that by showing that you can preview. You can go back and work on your report and you can preview. Right, yeah. Right. Right. yeah. When, when you're building, when you, when you're building, when you put in a function and um, 
you've got it on your screen in modify mode, it's file preview or the shortcut control I gives you the ability to see what it does. All right, now um, let's let's see if we can muck things up. We have a question here. You're going to try to muck up or you want the question first? <laughs> Rachel is asking if there's a way to return the first pay transaction after canceling a registration. Uh, after printing a registration, the first payment. Now, payment. She now, wants to see the original payment from them. Oh, original payment. <clears throat> well, let's 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 go to help. Uh, so we're in the help guide here. We're in add a pay. Let's take a look at related topics. Add pay function description. I think what uh, Rachel is looking for is if you're doing a refund and you want to know what the original payment was that you're doing the refund to, there is this function called org pay. And what org pay does is return the original payment when you're doing refund reporting. <clears throat> so that if you're on a particular refund record and you want to know data about that original payment, org pay is the function that you would you would use for that. So I don't know, Rachel, if that gets you in close, but again, um, the idea would be go to uh, go to your payment functions. And well, let's let's go to the main function area and just kind of browse them here. Uh, back to home reporting, report functions, and there we have payment functions. So again, we can browse through these payment functions: pay table from a group, specified field, number of payments. Again, lots of you know nuances of how you might want to do that. Payments for an individual uh between two dates return payments from the original payment and refund reporting so again uh that that again you'll note alphabetically these are kind of across the board in terms of what the beginning letter is but they all have to do with payments so i, I think this new format of Sheryl's where they've grouped them together should be a great resource for you uh follow up uh, on that or other other you answered her question now you can return to i think you were working on mucking something up so all righty yeah i was gonna make a mistake now i know you guys never do that but i i do that pretty regularly and so the idea would be if i'm in an area and i'm typing something and i've got an error and so i've typed fm uh if i if I was gonna guess it would, and type firm, firm, I-R-M, I double type firm, firm. Well, let's see what happens here. And we're gonna preview this, uh, preview this. And it says, whoa, what, what is this? There is no such thing as firm, firm. Okay, the nice thing about the report writer is that when you're using functions and if there is an error in a function, what it'll do if you click ignore, uh, oh, we have to do this for. Oh, we have to do this cancel. for 100 million. No, hit cancel. Hit cancel. Oh, hang on a second. Let's try that again. Cancel. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. If yeah, you, that if takes you, you right it, back. Yeah. If you if you get an error on a function, and and you see that cancel ignore. <clears throat> If you hit cancel, it will actually bring up in the modify mode the offending problem, the problem child, if you would. And so we're looking at this firm and he said, well, wait a minute, I want the firm name from the, uh, I wanna go to the firm record and get the name of the firm that is tied to this particular person. You say, well, am I spelling it wrong? So, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna use a help guide. We're gonna go to screen layout. We're gonna go to the firm screen. We're gonna hover over the firm field and it's, oh, it's FM firm, not firm firm. What in the world are those ASWARE guys thinking? Whoa, I don't wanna go there. We wanna go, and so it's backspace, 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 M, FM firm. And voila, it's a lot better now. So 
All right, well, we managed to screw up. So there we go. We work hard enough, we can screw up. Um, other questions? Again, next next uh, month we're going to be going. We're going to be keeping on rolling through the functions. Uh, hopefully by now uh, we've kind of given you enough info that you can begin to feel more comfortable going in exploring. I, if you're a report writer, Sharon, are there questions? I, I'm going to ramble, but I wanted to, I wanted to. Um, there's a question that just came in. What button are you hitting to preview the report from the modify screen? Another wants to see the preview again. The, the control preview again. Button. Okay. How do you do that? So when you're in the modify screen, it's under file, print preview, or the shortcut is the control I. Control plus the I is the print preview shortcut. Okay. All right, um, back to help. And we're, we're gonna close out here, guys. Uh, thank you for hanging in there with me. I would really encourage you, if, if you're a report writer, uh, grab a cup of coffee, go now over to the report functions area and just start kind of browsing through some of those. And it's, it's really pretty easy um you you go in and say well formatting well i like to i like to pretty up my report so what what options do i have for formatting so again returning beginning ending date returning the time the course is held hmm. uh, returning the full state name well if i wanted to print out nebraska instead of just ne i could use the big state function and i would pass it the field name so NM big state NM state will return the full name of whatever state abbreviation is in the state field. Uh, then I can go back in and uh, you know continue exploring uh, these particular areas. So yeah, it it really is a I think a pretty uh, uh, accessible way. There is just lots of things in there that I think you're going to be surprised if you really haven't studied this. Or, or browsed it yet, um, you're gonna be surprised as to how many uh, functions you can find that just might be useful as heck uh, to you guys. So have I been able to flush out any other questions or people ready to get to lunch? Just or, a reminder or, to everyone that this is recorded and will be emailed to you tomorrow morning. And the slides that Chuck has will be in the webinar archives if you're wanting those as well. All right, do we have the, uh, I guess we don't, have, there's our next webinar. Uh, wanted to make sure we have uh, have that April 22nd. Um, I guess that's Earth Day or is that the spring equinox? Uh, we'll be dealing, adding info and getting into math functions. So go out and function away folks and um, have a great uh, weekend, have a good spring. Uh, we're, we're close to spring. We're getting closer, getting closer. So Sharon, thank you much. Thanks for joining us guys. And Matthew, uh, appreciate your help. Have a good one, everybody. Everybody. Bye everyone. Bye, everybody.